My name is Elvira Rodriguez, and I am the Assistant Director of Customer Service and Outreach for the University of Houston Downtown Financial Aid Office. Today, I'm going to be presenting information on the FAFSA, or the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. In this session, we will be covering how you complete the FAFSA application and more. Um, for this session, we will be uh, referring to the 2022-2023 uh, FAFSA application. So what will be covered today? We're gonna to talk about creating an FSA ID and what that is, um, documents that you will need to have on hand when you are completing the FAFSA application. We'll also show how you actually complete the FAFSA application. Then we'll talk about some tips and errors to avoid um, as you go through the process of applying. And then we'll follow up with what happens after you submitted your FAFSA, what steps come after that. And then we'll talk about the types of awards and how the disbursement process works. So for the FSA ID, every student who is completing a FAFSA application will need to create an FSA ID. The FSA ID is gonna be a username and password that you use to log into the Department of Education websites. Below on the screen, you see the uh, link, and that is the link to um, create that FSA ID. If you are a dependent student, your parent will also need to create an FSA ID as well. So here I have a little video to talk about how you go about creating that FSA ID. Creating an FSA ID. The FSA ID is the username and password you will use on federal student aid websites, such as the FAFSA or federal student loan websites. Once your FSA ID is created, you will be able to use your username, email address, or mobile number to log in with your password. Your FSA ID is used to confirm your identity when you access your financial aid information and electronically sign federal student aid documents. It is important to keep your FSA ID confidential and do not share it with others. Your FSA ID is unique to you. Parents of dependent students need to create their own FSA ID. To create an FSA ID, follow these steps. Step one. Enter your login information by providing your email address, a unique username, and your password. Step 2. Enter your name, date of birth, and social security number. Step 3. Enter your mailing address. Step 4. Register your mobile phone number for account recovery using a text message. Step 5. Select your language preference. Step 6. Answer four challenge questions for security purposes. Step seven. When you submit your FSA ID information, review the terms and conditions, verify your mobile number and email address. Your FSA ID username and password do not expire unless compromised. Now you're on your way to getting an FSA ID. All right, so now let's talk about the types of documents that you're gonna to need to have on hand when you are completing the application. So first off, um, we're gonna need federal income tax forms. So for the 2022-2023 FAFSA application, we are looking at the 2020 tax year, so you'll need to have your 2020 taxes. Um, you should also have your W-2 forms or if you're self-employed, 1099s, um, records of any untaxed income, uh, your driver's license information, your email address, social security, date of birth, uh, your alien registration number if you have one, and your FSA ID. Now, if you are a dependent student, you are going to need this information as well for your parents. So now we're ready to go ahead and get started with completing the FAFSA. So you'll need to go to FAFSA.gov, and this is the uh, screenshot of what that website looks like. So when you get to this page, you have two options. You can click on start here if you're completing the application for the first time, or if you are a returning user where you've already submitted your application, maybe you need to go in and make some kind of changes to your application or just to view the information, you'll click on as returning user. So now we're gonna show a little video on what the process is to get started with completing the FAFSA application. FAFSA. Getting started 
Completing the free application for federal student aid, FAFSA, can seem overwhelming. This tutorial is designed to help you navigate and familiarize yourself with the FAFSA process. Begin by going to the Federal Student Aid website. If you have never completed a FAFSA before, click Start Here. If you are renewing your FAFSA, choose Returning User and choose Login. After you log in, you will be presented with two options, Renew My FAFSA Form or Start a New FAFSA Form. Selecting Renew My FAFSA Form will pre-fill your current FAFSA with data from last year's application. This will make it quicker to complete the FAFSA. Start a new FAFSA form should only be used if there are major changes to your or your parents' personal information. For example, if you're using a different parent to complete the FAFSA than the one you used on your last application, you should complete a new application. Next, you will select either, I am a student and want to access the FAFSA form, I am a parent filling out a FAFSA form for a student, or I am a preparer helping a student fill out his or her FAFSA form. Depending on your selection, the questions asked will be tailored to you. If you are the student, choose the I am a student and want to access the FAFSA form option. Click Log in to continue. You may also choose to begin the FAFSA form with your personal identifiers, first name, last name, date of birth, and social security number. Enter your FSA ID, username, verified email address, or mobile number and password. If you do not have an FSA ID, you will need to create one using the Create Account option. If you are the parent, choose the I am a parent filling out a FAFSA form for a student option. Enter personal information for the student. Note, you and your, always, unless otherwise noted, refers to the student, the student's social security number, SSN, first name, last name, and student's date of birth. Read and accept the authorization information on accessing a U.S. federal government computer system. Choose Start 2022-23 FAFSA form. Next, you will be required to create a save key. The save key allows you to return to an application or a correction later if you need to stop and save your work. It also allows you to share access to your application or correction if your parent needs to add information or sign the FAFSA. The save key must be between four and eight characters long. You can use any combination of numbers and or uppercase and lowercase letters. But continue. The introduction slide gives you information on getting help to complete your FAFSA, the steps it takes to complete, how long it will take to complete, saving the FAFSA if you can't finish it, documents you will need to complete the FAFSA, signing the FAFSA, FAFSA on the web, security, and privacy. Select Continue. The application process has been broken down into seven steps. One, student demographics. Two, school selection. Three, dependency status. Four, parent demographics. Five, parent financials. Six, student financials. Seven, sign and submit. Please note that you will have the opportunity to retrieve your tax information directly from the IRS if you meet certain criteria. There are instances in which you may need to manually enter your tax information. As a result, we suggest you have a copy of your and your parents, if applicable, federal tax return on hand. Now you're ready to continue with the next steps to complete the FAFSA. All right, so I have some tips and errors, some things you want to try to avoid um, as you go through the process for applying for financial aid with the FAFSA application. So number one and, and very important is apply early. So the application does come out every October 1st of every year. So when that application comes out, we do encourage you to submit it right away. There's a lot of uh, funds that are awarded on a first come first serve basis. So applying early. Uh, one does help you maximize chances um, to receive those funds 
And two, applying early, you'll know in advance what type of financial aid you'll have available for the upcoming school year. Next, using the IRS data retrieval tool. So as mentioned in the video that we just saw, um, you will have the opportunity to do the IRS data retrieval tool. And what that will do is automatically uh, populate your tax information onto your FAFSA application. So if you are eligible to do it, we do recommend that you do use that data retrieval tool. It minimizes the chances for any errors. Um, and you know that the information that is being transferred over is correct and accurate. Another thing you want to watch is don't leave any questions blank or any fields blank. Not answering questions can cause miscalculations or could cause the rejection of your application. Next, listing an incorrect social security number or driver's license, license number. Um, this can be a, an issue as well. So um, we do have some uh, students who their parents don't have a social security number. Um, and if they don't have a social security number, what they'll need to do is enter um, all zeros for the social security number. They do not need to make up a number or enter a tax ID number. It will not go through, it will reject. So be sure that if you are a student with a parent with no social, that you do put zeros for their social security number. Um, doing that, you'll need to put foreign tax return so that it will recognize those zeros um, for the social and the taxes uh, information. Failure to use legal name. So a lot of us do have uh, nicknames or variations to our name. Please do not use a nickname or a variation of your name. You will need to use your legal name on your FAFSA application. Failure to do so could cause a rejection of your application, or we may have to request additional documents to clarify what your correct legal name is. Entering wrong address. Don't use a temporary, uh, temporary address. You must use your permanent address um, on your application. Next, entering wrong federal tax paid amount. This is a common issue we do see students put. Um, so be sure that if you are not doing the data retrieval tool and you're manually entering in your tax uh, information, that you are putting the correct information as reported on your taxes. So if there is an error in the filing status um, of how you filed your taxes or how your parent filed their taxes, the school will ask you to amend that tax return um, and it, for it to be filed with the IRS before we can proceed with your application. So an example of an incorrect filing status would be if your parents, they're married, however, they do not file um, either married filing jointly or married filing separately. They may both file single or one may file single and the other may file head of household. As a married couple, you cannot file those statuses. It has to be either married filing separately or married filing jointly. So if we do find upon review of your um, information that the way they filed their taxes was incorrect, um, you may be asked to get your taxes amended or your parent taxes, depending on who the issue lies with. Listing marital status incorrectly. So um, you must list your status as of the day that you sign that FAFSA. So if you are single, when you're signing it, you are single. If you are married, you are married. Um, so be sure that you are correctly listing what your status is as of the day that you're actually signing that FAFSA. Listing parents' marital status incorrectly. So if your custodial parent or biological parent has remarried, you will need to include that step parent's information as well. A failure to report an unborn child. So if you have a child that will be born before or during the award year, and you will provide more than half of their support, you can count that child as a member, as a member of the household. So after you submitted the FAFSA, so what happens next? So it does take about three to five business days for us to receive your application. Uh, we'll receive it electronically from Department of Education as long as you do add UHD as a school on your application. Once we re receive your application, we will upload it into our system and then we will send you an email letting you know that we have received your application. Now you can check your status at any time online at uhd.edu slash myuhd and when you log in, you'll click on scholarships and financial aid. In the event that you need additional information in addition to the FAFSA, we will send you an email um, letting you know you have items to complete um, on your to-do list. So uh, most documents that we request can be uploaded by you at home. 
So to upload any um, items that are being requested, you would go to, again, the uhd.edu slash myuhd portal and click on scholarships and financial aid and then view your to-do list. And from there, you'll be able to upload any items that we are requesting. If there is a document that we're requesting that you cannot upload, then that just means you can either email it to us or you'll come in person to turn in those requested documents. Now we're going to talk about financial aid awards. So once we've received your documents, if there was additional information that was needed or if not, and it was just the FAFSA, and we're able to then proceed to award you, we will send you an award notification and that's going to go to your Gator email. Now you'll need to possibly accept certain awards. Most grants are going to be auto accepted um, with the exception of Texas Grant and College Work Study. So if you happen to receive one or both or one or the other, you will need to go in and accept those types of funds. But if you receive federal Pell Grant or any other uh, type of state or institutional grants that we may offer you, no need to do anything for those to go through. Now, you will be offered loans as part of your awards package if you're eligible for loans. So if you are offered loan, it will be up to you to decide if you want to accept or decline those loans. If you do decide to accept the student loans for the school year, you will need to do some additional steps. You're going to need to complete what's called entrance counseling, and you'll need to sign a master promissory note or MPN. So you'll go to studentaid.gov to complete both of these items, and it will take about 24 to 48 hours for us to get the update electronically that you've completed these two items. These must be completed in order for your loans to disperse. If we do not receive one or both these items, your loans will not disperse. They will just sit in a pending status until those items have been completed. Enrollment. So be sure that you are enrolled in the correct number of hours to receive your financial aid. Most financial aid is going to require at least half-time enrollment. So if you're an undergraduate student, that's going to be at least six hours, six to eight hours. Um, if you're a graduate student, um, it's going to be at least a minimum of four credit hours to be considered half-time. Uh, so be sure that you are enrolled in the correct number of hours to receive uh, your awards. If you're unsure if you're going to be eligible to receive your aid based on your enrollment, then feel free to contact our office and we can go over your awards package to see if there are certain hour requirements that you need to meet to receive those funds. So now we'll talk about disbursement. So once you've been awarded, next would come disbursement. So financial aid for the semester will disperse anywhere from seven to 10 days before the first day of class. This is a federal rule. We cannot release any earlier than that. So basically we'll release funds about a week out before school starts. There's nothing that you need to do in order for those funds to, to disperse other than of course, register for classes. We'll do our part and disperse those funds to your account. If there is excess financial aid after tuition fees have been paid, you will receive a refund. So if you're going to be receiving a refund, our student business services department will uh, issue that refund to you based on the refund method you select. So you must do this through Bank Mobile. That is the bank that the university uses to disperse refunds to students. So you should get in the mail a green envelope or a green postcard of some sort um, indicating that you need to, to create an account through Bank Mobile and uh, set up how you would want your refund uh, to be distributed in the event that you are going to be receiving a refund. If you do have any questions about refunds, we do uh, recommend that you do contact the Student Business Services for more information on how to set that up. So on the screen, I have some resources that would be really good to jot down because these are things that you're going to probably use at some point as you go through the financial aid process or that you should use as you go through the process of applying. So first off, um, FAFSA.gov, this is number one. You're going to need this website to be able to actually apply for financial aid to access that FAFSA application. Second, we have our website address. So uhd.edu slash financial will take you directly to our website where we provide all kinds of information regarding financial aid, you know, what our process is, how to maintain eligibility, and so forth. On there, we also have access to our Zoom lobby. So we do have counselors available Monday through Friday between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. to meet with students one-on-one -on -one, um, if, if they have questions regarding their financial aid. Next, we have uhdfinancialaidtv.com. So it's a website with a playlist of videos concerning all kinds of topics about financial aid. 
we partner with a company called Ocelot who creates these videos and we had some of them um, on the presentation earlier that you saw the one about the FSA ID and about completing the FAST application. Those are just uh, some of the videos or an idea of the type of videos that you'll come across on the Financial Aid TV website. Um, but it goes into so many more topics other than just those things. Um, questions you might have, you might be able to get answered by going to that website and viewing the videos. And they're really short videos. Some of them are a minute to two minutes. It's a really good resource to use to get more information about financial aid. Next is studentaid.gov. So this is the website that you will use in the event that you decide to borrow student loans. You'll go to this website, remember to complete the master promissory note and to do entrance counseling. But it is so much more than just that. Um, through this website, it's gonna provide all kinds of information about federal financial aid, financial aid in general, um, information for you as a student, um, as well as for parents, right? Parents have the opportunity or the ability to apply for Parent PLUS loan if they choose to on your behalf. And so if they were to do that, they would go to this website to do so. So this is a Department of Education website, just like FAFSA.gov. Um, and it's a really great website where you can just find even more information about financial aid in general. Next is the uhd.edu slash myuhd. And that's going to be the link to take you to the MyUHD portal. So we've talked about in the presentation how through the portal, you can view your status, you can upload documents, see your awards, accept any awards that you need to do. So uh, you would do through this website or through this by accessing the website through this link. And then lastly, we have our email address. So uhdfinaid at uhd.edu. You can um, shoot us an email if you have a question or you're checking on the status or you know, whatever the case may be, if you need to submit documents to us, um, we're happy to assist you through our email. So we do have some social media accounts. We're on all the major platforms. And so as you see on your screen, we do have a Facebook account. We also have Twitter and we also have Instagram. Um, and then there is also what's called UHD Social Gators on TikTok. So our Social Gators um, do present information on various topics for the, the different departments on campus that are under enrollment management, including financial aid. We also have, that's new, a YouTube channel. And on that YouTube channel, we will post any information sessions that we host. We'll record those sessions in the event that you're not able to attend them uh, when we put them on. Uh, we'll post all kinds of things on that YouTube channel whenever we do Facebook Lives. Um, any important videos that we think that will be useful to you guys, we'll put on our YouTube channel. So definitely check us out on YouTube um, and subscribe to our channel. So if you need to contact us, we are available a variety of ways. If you are on campus, we are open Monday through Thursday from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. And on Fridays, we're here from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. Now, if you do wanna meet with someone virtually, you can't come to campus, that's certainly fine. You can meet with a counselor virtually between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Um, by logging onto our website, uhd.edu slash financial. There'll be a, a Zoom uh, button. You'll click on that to access our Zoom lobby and you'll just let the representative know that you would like to speak to a financial aid representative. Next, um, if you need to mail any documents to us, perhaps you're getting a scholarship check, right? And you need to get that check to us. Um, you would want to send it to the uh, mailing address that you see on your screen. Um, or again, if you have just financial aid documents that you would like to mail in, you can do so um, at the uh, mailing address on your screen. And then we have our phone and our fax. So if you would like to call in with your questions, we do have a contact call center with financial aid representatives waiting and ready to answer those questions. So you'll call 713-221-8041. If you need to fax anything to us, you can do so at 713-223-7483. And then lastly, if you do wanna email us, like I said, we are available via email. Um, you can email us at uhdfinaid at uhd.edu. Thank you for joining this information session. I hope that the information was useful to you and that you were able to get your questions answered. If not, please reach out to us in one of the ways that we discussed um, in the presentation. We're happy to assist in any way that we can. Thank you and have a wonderful day.